Traveling the Vortex. We've joined the Doctor as he travels the Vortex, and I wish this to be episode number 280. That open wasn't great, but neither was this story, so what are you going to do? I'm Keith. I'm Sean. I'm Glenn. How are you guys? Well, that's going to do it for this week's show. Until next week. (laughs) That's our review. I wish that's how we could do this. (laughs) There were some redeeming factors of the story, I think. I wish there were more redeeming factors. I wish there were more, too, but... Did you guys have a good week? Have we tipped our hands any? (laughs) What? No, no. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. <laughs> you wouldn't believe me if I told you. <laughs> oh man! Did you guys watch uh, the second episode of Game of Thrones? Yes. And and I did. and I did. Uh, uh, fool me for a stupid person. It wasn't until the mountain smashed that guy against the wall, which was awesome, that it dawned on me that um, that's the same mountain. Yeah. Because well, that was it was a whole season, wasn't it? Well, since was, was he's the, been out for a while, but because yeah. I, I, I you, you remember, I was very angry that Oberon, you know, squeak, <laughs> and um, I, I just kind of assumed that Oberon had gotten him. That with all the poison and all the little stabs, he did. That, that, no, that he he thing. did get him, but I guess he recovered. So well, well, if you remember at the end of that season, I think we're going to get a yeah, because at the end of last season he was there. Yeah, and they got a. And Cersei comes back. There, there was a talk of the how uh, that they resurrected him. Oh, so he, he is. He He's, was dead. He was dead, but they resurrected him. That's the impression I get. I think they're going to let us in on what happened for sure. But. Okay, well then I'm not. I'm still confused, but I'm less crazy, I guess. <laughs> well, you're still crazy. <laughs> well, no, I kept for different reasons. I yeah. kept looking at this guy, going, "Where did she find another guy that large?" <laughs> yeah, because it was season Where'd she four. she find another mountain? I wonder if they're just <laughs> using the same actor again. Because surely that, that it can't be that many big people that are. I mean, this is like Andre the Giant size guy. <laughs> and then when you know he was standing there in his thing, and I went, "This is the same guy. He just got better." Okay. I didn't get to watch episode three yet, so I haven't either. I haven't either. That's a Wednesday thing. I don't get to it till uh, Wednesday. So. <laughs> I I spent the week rewatching a large chunk of Phase Two of the Marvel movies, starting with Winter Soldier, Age of Ultron, and then Ant-Man. And then going back to bonus features on LG Voltron because I hadn't watched it since I got it for Christmas. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Wow. I just hadn't gotten around to it. I watched a really good movie. I'm diverging back away from the big one because we're going to talk about something else here in a minute. But I watched a movie called Man Up. It stars Simon Pegg and Lake Bell. Oh. That's and on my just, new release while at work. I just haven't. showed up on Netflix this week or last week. Anybody that likes either of those actors uh, would totally like this movie because it's so in character. I'm gonna have to check that one out. I, I notice it on Netflix too and put it on my queue. So I should go do that now. I watched it entirely too late because I was watching Clone Wars and uh, which, by the way, I'm on episode twelve. Oh, or 13, I think. Did you finish the droid arc? I finished the droid arc. Are, 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 are you ready for It was one? good. Uh, it was it, so it, good. The first one was kind of It's, cute. Mad. it's it, cute. It takes it's, a different approach it, it, to... It lightens the season yeah, It lot. really <laughs> lights, lightens the season. I, I, I it was really, really cute. I better start really <laughs> out of the way now to, well, it's, to keep in stuff It's one it. of those things where in the mornings I'll, ta- I'll sit down for about an hour and a half and I'll knock three episodes oh, out. Yeah. So I've, I've really been kind of plowing through it. John, do you watch anything besides the big one? Uh, I did. I watched one episode of Clone Wars. <laughs> still a season behind you, but it was the first part of the uh, jerk Jedi general who's going to force the clones to march up the road to attack oh, the yeah. thing. And yeah, that made me that whole episode. That whole episode makes me mad. Arc. Yeah, it made me mad. Yeah. Um, but I haven't finished uh, finished that yet. We watched um, Battleship. <laughs> had you seen that one? Before? I had not seen that one before. Have you guys seen it? No. No. I know. Okay. I no interest in that one. Yeah, I, despite I, the great people that are in it. I, I really, same same boat, really didn't have much desire. It just was like, uh, okay, well, you know, we're, it, it looked like Transformers. You know how I feel about Transformers. I don't need to go down that road again. But we, Mel had had a rough night. She wanted something with a lot of action and killing. And we kind of looked through this. And I, it was one of those I had acquired. I don't even know how. It was, you know, still had a five ninety nine <laughs> sticker on it. I think it was probably a freebie or something. I was like, all right. The first 
half is pretty horrible. But then the last half comes along. That part was amazing. It was self-serving. It was idiotic. And it was a lot of fun. But just the last half of it. So I'm really torn because we, we sat there going the whole time. Uh, we're totally getting rid of this one. We don't need to keep it. As soon as the aliens show up, we'll make our decision if we're going to keep watching it. And then once you get to the battleship part of it, it was like, this was dumb, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> I, I might desire to one. see it. Yeah, <laughs> so, so there was that. But then we saw that other, you know, the big one. So Now we all saw uh, Civil War this weekend. Yeah. So let's sound the spoiler warning now. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. <laughs> That'll work. We went, and the kids loved it. Mason said, oh, it's so much better than Winter Soldier. And it was one of those ones that I sat there and I watched it, and mm-hmm. I thought, is this better than Winter Soldier? Is this better? I, the more it soaked in, it was better than Winter it, Soldier. It's, I think, as a story, not as good as Winter Soldier, but for character development and for character growth. And I think you could sit somebody down and introduce them to Winter Soldier had they not seen another Marvel movie, and they'd be okay. This one, you need the investment in the characters all the way through it. For it to be I would agree with that. But that's definitely a downside to this movie is from, if you hadn't watched all of them or even if you were missing a piece one. Like, Ant Man, you could probably miss Ant Man and be okay. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. <laughs> but but even that winds up being a He has such a big role. A, a pretty yeah. large big piece of role. role. <laughs> um, that was one of my favorite moments when oh. he's running up the wing of that airplane. And he starts saying, uh, okay, I'm gonna try something and uh, well I I've done it in the lab before but it's I really dangerous. I, yeah, I passed out. It's real dangerous. I could rip myself apart. <laughs> and they're all like, what's he talking about? Because nobody knows the guy. Yeah. I mean, he's the it's only like Falcon. Sam's the only any, one that can... Yeah, any sort of contact with this guy. He's just been introduced to Cap. And nobody on the other team knows him from Adam. And <laughs> <laughs> he starts running up that thing. And when he grows, Caitlin and I looked at him and we're like, he did not just do that. <laughs> This could have gone so poorly for this putting this character in this movie, <laughs> except for they're making the little the, the size thing work. They're making oh, yeah. the little tiny Him size inside thing. Iron Man's yeah, suit. Yeah, tearing up the. I'm your conscience. You I was like, me in a while. I was like, wow, this is okay. They're do they're utilizing this really well, but then there's so much other great stuff going on in that scene, that and I think, I love is, that fight scene much ooh. better than the end. Even though I liked, I love the ending. I thought uh, the twist that well, the twist that happens in I didn't see coming either. Me neither. Well, I didn't see the twist leading to the end. Yeah. Of that and then how it's resolved, I didn't see. Coming. Right, and so the, the uh, well, so well, I'm just enjoying this whole battle, and I'm sitting there watching Ant Man going, "Oh, they're they're doing a great job. They, they, they've really integrated. all the characters are spot on. They're really used. They're balanced. They're well done." Ant Man's even that was the one I was learning about. Ant Man's being utilized. <laughs> and when he does that, I went, "Wow, this just got even better." <laughs> well, and what's great is that battle is a lot of even though they're friends, they're people you like. You don't want to see fighting. The fight is so much fun because it's so dynamic and it uses all the abilities so well that the end fight is the emotional yeah, weight of the yeah. film. Yeah, which fortunately they worked it out that way. So yeah, that it, it because, worked really well. You know, well. <laughs> Nat and uh, Clint <laughs> pulling their punches and we're still friends, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, how hard you hit me. <laughs> exactly. I was just, and then when Wanda steps in and she <laughs> yanks... Uh, uh, Black Widow away and throws her against that plane. You were pulling your punches. <laughs> and oh, and all so the good. little bits of, hi, I'm blah, blah, blah. We haven't met yet. I, I'm, I'm now blanking on who's, who was introducing themselves other than well, Spider-Man. Well, uh, Ant-Man was Ant-Man doing the was, same thing to Tony. Yeah, He yeah, said that to right. Tony. He says, yeah, you, you, you don't know me. <laughs> Which was <laughs> kind of cool that they had a character on... Uh, Tony's team that was that nobody knew, and yeah. they had somebody on uh, Cap's team that nobody knew from the other side. So it was that was pretty cool. Well, the uh, truly amazing thing is it's it's a great story. The truly amazing thing was Spider Man, and I and we'll, we'll, I, I we'll say that I we'll say that with the uh, uh, pun fully intended. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. The truly amazing thing is that it's it's a great movie. It's exceptionally well written, and for as many egos <laughs> and characters as they have in this movie. There is not a one of them that is shoehorned in. Nope. No, There's no, not no. a one of them that is is you know everybody. Well, they, were, they, were, they originally were wanted Nick Fury in there too, but they didn't serve the story, so they didn't have him in it. Yeah, I mean, it just everybody has their moment to shine. Everybody has their their you know the spotlight where they can do their thing. Everybody's brought in in a logical 
manner for the story yes. as opposed to just showing up, which yes. I was really worried they were going to do with Spider-Man. Yeah. When they announced that they got Spider-Man, I was like, oh, here we go. They're going to, hey, look, we got Spider-Man. And the fanboys will go nuts, and the people that are just enjoying the MCU are going to go, this doesn't make any sense. I still would have liked a little bit more, why does Tony know this guy? Why has he been keeping track of this guy? But I suspect that we're going to get that in the Spider-Man well, movie. Well, you, yeah. you heard that they've already signed yeah, Robert, Downey Jun- Robert Downey Jr. for Spider-Man yeah. Homecoming. So, so I, I think that's like where that we'll... title, but it's, it's so well, I found it interesting that Homecoming was also one of the words that uh, was Bucky's keywords. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's kind of a uh, Marvel going... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that feels like it more than anything. That's, that's where that title came maybe from. It'll be, maybe it'll be set during Homecoming, since he's a nice Well, I, I wonder. I'm sure that'll be tied in a little bit, yeah. Everybody, I, I've seen so much love, and Spider-Man was wonderful in the film. But I have a feeling that it's going to be a Flash situation. Where what they loved about him isn't going to carry over enough in the, his standalone film. If, it's going to be the Flash on Arrow That's situation. right, if it's written correctly, because what Captain America... Civil War did was it tapped into what makes Spidey great in the comic books. It's something that Raimi's films sort of did well. It was something Amazing that Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man tried to do. I think it's a little bit better than. Uh, it well, I think they did it a little better, but then it was the the character still too angsty. So yeah. you you couldn't. It was hard to balance the things that what they were doing right with the angst yeah. of it. Yeah. And this Spider-Man was just having fun doing what he was doing and making quippy remarks and just it, it, so much fun. Um, so unless much they can fun. somehow do it like similar to Ant-Man where most of it is levity, where there isn't as much seriousness, I have a feeling fans are going to be a little bit more disappointed. But with this one, it's a darker story because we're dealing with the, the, the morals and the ethics. And well, the, I think the moral question that they pose in this as opposed to Batman versus Superman is a much more interesting and much more relevant question to well, today's it's, society. And it's, it's a much more relatable one. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I haven't even seen Bat Soup yet, but when you're asking, do we have the right to be a god, it's kind of like, I don't know. I'm not a god. How do I know? <laughs> I can't weigh in on this one. But in you know when when we boil it down to the you have too much power, we think somebody should regulate you. And as Robert Danny Jr. is giving this impassioned speech about <laughs> why he thinks this is a good thing and we need this, he's got me convinced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's right. And then Cap comes back with, but the minute we give up the ability to do the to govern ourselves, we don't. You know, we can't do it, and you can't go back. What happens if we need to go somewhere and we can't? And I went, oh. Yeah, he's right too. Yeah, yeah. Cap's right. They, they, you know, they balance it all the bo- argument so well. It all boils down to liberty versus security is what it boils down to. And yeah. that's something that we're dealing with in today's society. So we all relate to Even though we've got this huge fight, this knockdown, drag out fight on the tarmac, we've got those moments of levity. We've got things that are kept bringing the mood back up a little bit so that it wasn't weighing down and getting super super yeah. d- until the end when yeah. it well, needed yeah, to be. Which, that, well, that fight was yeah, so that crucial had to, to lift yeah. the mood yeah. because it was pretty serious throughout most of it and not a lot of levity until yeah. that point. That yeah. had to be. But they just, the, the balance was struck so well on this. My, my only complaint with the movie, really, is kind of what sets off the Accords. Is it just me or... Did Wanda save a whole bunch of lives, and she's getting crucified over the eleven that she well, didn't get to save? No, had yes. he gone off on the ground, the death toll would have been huge. But but the thing with their what they're trying to drill down to is the idea that any lo- any lost life is uh, a and, bad thing, and, and it is. And it wasn't like they it, it was like that event was the tipping point yeah, because they looked because back because they showed us Sokovia the montage they had New York, Sokovia. There was one other one in there. Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. I yeah. was a little surprised that they didn't show London because that whole uh, yeah, four event too. takes place there. And I'm a little surprised they didn't show us the piece from... Uh, oh, uh, Hulkbuster. Yeah, that was it. South uh, South. South, uh, South Africa. Yeah. Uh, the, whatever town that was in yeah, South Africa. Wasn't. Yeah. Um, and I understand it's a tipping point. I just felt like there should have been somebody saying, but she saved a bunch of lives. Well, I, I think that's, that's that our argument. job as fans to go, oh, wait a minute, but you're not yeah. looking at the big picture. But I think but the, the writers of this film are also tr- paralleling 
real life now well, and where media we look would at we, yeah that's just that. it we and look probably at probably footage of we look at the minute things and, and don't up at a building yeah it's like well, we're not we, getting the other side of it where you see we the, look you at know, the really. minute things we don't look at the big picture and yeah. that's it. i mean how many casualties are there in these wars that are ha- civilian casualties happening that, that countries cause every day yeah. in these wars and as as much as it pains me to have to have any sort of civilian casualties, it is a part of war. It it's something that it happens. It's, and it's it, unavoidable. Was it anybody else? I, I, I a nitpicky nitpicky thing, but the opening sequence, um, well, the, you mentioned the, the the tipping point and all that. That whole bit, the chase sequence, the the effects during that scene looked really off. To oh, me. the effects were fine. It was the camera work was. Nauseating. Well, that's the second complaint it was the that I have. Quick, quick edits. Yeah. Is that what it is? Because it, it, it really I, I'm glad they didn't stay with that feel for the whole film. Well, yeah. it really made it almost it looked like bad 90s effects yeah, when Falcon would fly in and the drone would do stuff. It was just like, what am it's I watching really here? choppy cuts. And, and really I didn't choppy. like it. And I then like the, the, where, um, when Winter Soldier breaks out of the, uh, the, the base the stairwell fight. and Black Widow kicks everybody's oh, butt... Man, I wish I could have seen that. <laughs> yeah, I, I but agree. The shaky cam I ruined agree. the aesthetics of that fight. I scene. completely agree. It was, that was the only downfall of this film was the fact that that was just shot poorly. I, I when they initially announced that the Russo brothers were going to be taking over for the Infinity Wars, I was a little nervous just because I I know Winter Soldier was such a great film and they did such a good job, but the Which, Avengers is a whole other beast entirely. And now... It, it felt like a gut... Take it over. It felt like a gut reaction after Winter Soldier. Yeah. And you yeah. sort of think, I, I kind of wish but, you but, had but some... Joss knows what he's yeah, doing. Yeah, you kind of wish that they, they gave them a little more track record time in order to hand over the mantle, but they're now seeing they this, have. they've had it, yeah. <laughs> Anybody else a little freaked out by a really young Robert Downey Jr.? <laughs> I thought they did a great job. Oh man, uh, would have been good a job. would have been more so would have been more so if I wasn't already wowed by uh, young uh, Michael Douglas. <laughs> that man, uh, younger Michael Douglas. Well, he was quite a bit younger. Eighties Michael Douglas. Yeah, yeah. We're talking uh, Wall Street Michael Douglas. I went, what? <laughs> what am I watching here? And so, yeah, when I saw Tony, I was like, All yeah, right. they did a really good job. All right. The balance of characters was so well done in this. And it, for something that could have been just crammed full of heroes, it wasn't. I, in it was in Infinity War, I want Everett Ross and Stephen Strange to share a screen <laughs> in both their American accents. There was my other problem with this movie was that Why did he Everett have Ross was not in this. He wasn't in this that much. He was in like three scenes, and I was like, oh, man. I'm sure he's got a bigger part to play later. I hope so. Should we move on to news? Yeah, let's move on to news. Uh, our first bit of news is if you pre-ordered uh, Moonblink, you should be getting a new short story here very shortly, if you haven't gotten it already, called The Lock-In, written by Sarah Groenwagen. Eh? Groen, I... going to commit to that one? <laughs> I'm not going to commit to that. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be coming out very shortly, if it's not out already. Uh... Moon, and we have an official date, ship date for Moonblink, which is May 13th. All right. So everyone who pre-orders uh, Moonblink will get the lock-in. Free copy of the lock-in. And, in addition to that, their, their f- next audiobook has been released. Uh, the Shizoider. <laughs> no. Schizoider. The Schizoider. <laughs> You uh, both got slapped down by Andy on that one. <laughs> Read by Terry Malloy. So. Suffice to say, it is one of the words that the Knights of Knee cannot say. <laughs> so definitely go check those out and pre-order and get your short story. I'd be pretty excited to actually hear Terry Malloy read that. Yeah. I've, and he read the first one, too. Yeah. So he's, I think he's doing the whole first series. I started listening to him doing uh, one of the Doctor Who audiobooks. A uh, couple years ago, I can't remember which one it was, and uh, didn't get it finished. But I, I thoroughly enjoyed his uh, reading and performance of the material. So I think he's a, a good choice. Wish I could remember what Doctor Who book audiobook I listened to or started listening to that he was reading. Maybe it'll come to you later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, other news: South Africa. 
That's the one I was trying to. Well, where did third didn't <laughs> oh, 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 no, no. <laughs> uh, Big Finish has got their Doctor Who and Torchwood license renewed until 2025. So last year we got the news that they ex- were extended to 2020. Now. 2025. So we got nine years for sure of more big finish stories. Next year, we anticipate hearing that it's been renewed through 2030. <laughs> <laughs> I think what they did is they went in to negotiate Torchwood. Yeah. And were able to negotiate five more years of Doctor Who. I think so too, because le- by that time they hadn't gotten the Torchwood license. Correct. And I'm assuming this th- this article that I've seen only doesn't say it. I'm assuming that also includes Unit. Because that's that kind of falls under the New Who umbrella. It doesn't say, so hopefully. One would think that that's just kind of an all-inclusive blanket license. Well, I, I mean, wonder, Torchwood I get being a separate I, I entity. Wonder, but. I wonder how much of that, though, because it, what, what all falls under that Doctor Who umbrella? Does that include Jago and Lightfoot? Does it include uh, Vienna? Does that include Ir- uh, yeah, Iris uh, Wildtime? Does that, because they've got so many Gallifrey. splinters. Uh, Gallifrey. So you you wonder how much of that's under the Doctor Who umbrella. Um, Torchwood obviously was a separate entity, uh, especially they, since Star stepped on board and had some, yeah, you know, uh, money in that franchise as well. So, uh, in their forthcoming highlights, they do mention uh, Unit. So I would think they wouldn't include that if it wasn't part of something there. Yeah, oh, hard telling. Who knows? Yeah. Well, that's still exciting. Plenty of uh, Big Finish to last us through any sort of wilderness we get. Congrats, Big Finish. Yeah. And our last bit of news is uh, one of our local conventions is coming up here soon, and they just added a Who-related guest. (laughs) (laughs) Miss Peggy Carter herself, Haley Atwell. Woo! Yay. That led with that, but... (laughs) (laughs) Trying to make it Doctor Who related, you know. Speaking of Agent Carter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course, she was in several big finish stories, including Blood of the Daleks, the Dermwood, Doomwood Curse, Whispering Forest, and the Sands of Life that we most recently listened to. And which con is uh, she going to be appearing She's at? going to be at Planet Comic Con. All right. Friday only, which sucks because I can't go Friday. Yeah, we'll be there Friday either. <laughs> I hope they somehow get some extension and she can come back Saturday. She's got to go record more Big Finish, weren't you listening? <laughs> they have stories to do all the way out until 2025. That's true. She said in the uh, interview after uh, the last one, Sands of... What was it? Sands of... Sands of Life. Sands of Life. She said in an interview that she was always open to more Big Finish, so... That got me excited. <laughs> She seems down to earth enough that she would still come back after the huge success of Agent Carter and her new series that hopefully will be a success. Maybe not. If it means we don't get more Agent Carter, I'm okay if it's not a success. Yeah. That's the... <laughs> but she's a good actress, so I want to see her succeed. So, Isn't it odd now that Captain America, we got, you know, we got two Who guests in, in Captain America. Three. It's true. Three. 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 Toby Jones. Oh, yeah, I forgot about Toby Jenna Jones. Coleman and Hallie Atwell. Of all the ones to forget, I forgot Toby Jones. <laughs> well, and... Uh, One of the bigger ones. If, uh, loosely connected was um, who played... Um, shoot, now his name escaped me. That played uh, William Hartnell in... Uh, David Avengers Bradley? Time. David Bradley's in uh, Captain America First Avenger as well. He's the guy at the um, fortress where they're hiding the Tesseract at the very beginning when they break in and come steal it. He's the... Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. That's right. That's not loosely. He was. That's not loosely. Oh, he was in. He, he was in. Yeah, you're uh, right. Dinosaur Spaceship. Dinosaur Spaceship. So not even loosely. Not connected. even loosely. Yeah, that's directly it. connected. So you've got that tie as that well. That movie. Yeah, that movie has at least four. I'm sure there's. <laughs> who knows more? To, that's the next meme discovered. I want. I don't care how many Doctor Who actors were on Game of Thrones <laughs> or Harry Potter. I want to know how many Doctor Who actors were in the MCU. Yeah. So. Well, there's. Starting to be a lot of them. Somebody call up Tommy Lee Jones and give him an invite. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for news. Any feedback? Uh, do we want to do the Goodreads 
comments now and feedback? Or do we want to wait? Let's do them before. All right. right. Holly wrote in the uh, book club discussion, uh, this was the very first Doctor Who novel that I ever read, and I enjoyed it the first time I read it, and still love the story reading it the second time around. Mrs. Rayner has the characters' voices down pat, and who couldn't go wrong with the time period that this book is set in? Plus, the bad guy in the book is rather interesting. I'm keeping this spoiler free until more people have had the chance to read. So, spoilers <laughs> from here on out. <laughs> okay. If, if you want to send us feedback, you can chime in on the Goodreads Book Club or send us feedback at feedback at travelingthevortex.com. On our website, travelingthevortex.com, there is a send feedback tab or... Uh, as we had issues recently, if you want to double send the email, send it to travelingthevortex at gmail.com. You can also reach out to us on, of course, uh, Facebook, Traveling the Vortex, and Twitter, at Travel Vortex. And we'll just read it twice. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> That's it for feedback. Let me pull up my synopsis here real quick. Hold on. Well, that's it for this week's show. No, you've got to... <laughs> nope, we got to talk about it, Sean. Okay. Mickey is startled to find a statue of Rose in a museum, a statue that is 2,000 years old. The doctor realizes that this means the TARDIS will shortly take them to ancient Rome, but when it does, he and Rose soon have more on their minds than sculptures. While the doctor searches for a missing boy, Rose befriends a girl who claims to know the future. A girl whose predictions are surprisingly accurate. But then the doctor stumbles on the hideous truth behind the statue of Rose. And Rose herself learns that you have to be very careful what you wish for. You missed a couple of reviews on Goodreads. Oh, was there more? Yeah. uh, Sean writes, uh, never judge a book by its cover. Because this isn't this one isn't about what you think, but maybe it should have been, because the story presented is silly and predictable and not terribly well written. It's not bad, just far from good. And then uh, Glenn also reviewed this, and he started out a short review. See, the problem is you guys starts off predictable, starts off predictable, begins to lead you to believe that it's not predictable, becomes predictable again, shows some heart and emotion briefly, turns silly, ends as predicted, with a well established trope nonetheless. He goes on to say a longer review coming in the weeks and on the podcast, but I don't know if I can say any more than that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should have put those in the thread, in the comment thread. I, I, should, I didn't, I, honestly, I didn't realize till just now when I went to the the, the, the thread <laughs> to read the next review, because I thought, surely more people have read this and put their comments on there, and I'll be ready to go for the next one instead of me fumbling around for my computer and then Keith having to read it. And it wasn't there, and I was like, well, I know I reviewed it. Oh. <laughs> That occurred to me when I went to look, too. Didn't put it in there, did I? I'll have to move that over. Um, so, um, surprise number one. <laughs> no weeping angels in the book of the Stone Rose. I was okay with that, surprisingly. I didn't expect them, because when they have weeping angels in the new seri- new adventure books, they're always new series adventures, they're always on the cover. <laughs> So that was number one. I was like, I didn't go in with any expectations that it was going to be a weeping angel. I kept waiting and waiting. <laughs> you know, it's was like, oh, Mickey's surprised to find a statue. And I went, I know why that statue's there. That was to hit my first Half point. The book it gets lead you brief. It's not predictable. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> or it starts I, off predictable. I, I was totally thinking, oh, I can tell you chapter and verse what's going to happen in the story. And then I couldn't. And I was, I was very happily surprised with that. Unfortunately... <laughs> Well, we pulled the rug out. We are going to be predictable. (laughs) i got to disagree with you, Holly. I I don't think Jacqueline has a very good grasp on the voice of the characters at all. There were times that it felt like ten, and then there were times that it felt like nine. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. And I'm sure it was in that awkward period before she had seen any ten to really kind of know what he was going to do with the character, maybe given some guidance to kind of say, try to do this, but it, she doesn't quite stick to landing. Especially in the angry bits. The angry sometimes, bits feel more nice. Sometimes I'm a little more forgiving with a book if the plot isn't solid, if I'm having a fun time with it. It was one of those 
situations where I wasn't even having that much fun reading it. And it's weird because a lot of times when I, I clip through this book in like three days, but it's not very long. Um, but I don't read very fast. But I was I was clipping through this book and I kept I couldn't pick my finger. I was like, why, why do I keep reading? I mean, obviously I kept reading because I wanted to get done <laughs> and I wanted to have it reviewed. But why am I reading this like several chapters at a time? It's just not fun. I'm not. It, it's not a great story. It's just kind of there and meandering and. And it, it really felt predictable. And then it, it occurred to me, the reason I kept reading is I was hoping it would get better. <laughs> and I kept thinking, surely this will pick up. No? Okay. Surely they're going to, like, fool me here. And I they, now I thought I've got this figured out. And then I'm not going to have it figured out anymore. And they're going to pull the wool over my eyes. And then there was one brief moment where I go, okay, this is turning a different direction. Maybe this is not going to be as predi- – oh, no, it's predictable again. Here we go. And, <laughs> was it the moment the genie showed up? <laughs> no, I, I, no, that's the silly. That's the silly. Because when this this genie shows up, and I thought, okay, well, yeah, that's where it started to not get predictable, yes. But when the genie shows admit, up – Got to didn't see that coming. <laughs> when the genie shows up, I go, okay, this is interesting. What's going on here? And – I, I my first initial thought was surely they're not going to go down that path. This is going to be some sort of alien, or this is going to be just some sort of robotic technology, something we don't understand. No, it's a genetically engineered being that or creature that grants wishes. And I was like, surely you give me okay. That was another reason I probably kept reading because surely give me a better explanation for what this I think thing it was is. mechanical. Get, yeah, it, I got the impression it was mechanical too. Bio, why did it. they say biomechanical? Because bio bio they said genetically engineered at one point when they were describing the the, the whole history of the process. Th- that fixes a little bit because for me, but I didn't. It wasn't talk conveyed a lot about well AI enough. AI and it's in, intelligence. It was artificial being intelligence. intelligence. You're right. They did and, talk and about the fact that when it when it's coming up with things like I calculate the uh, or the power needed to get you back to that's blah, blah, right blah. i mean that's, it's, right. that's a computer so yeah but i just i kept i kept going you really have gone there with a genie you've just gone there with a genie <laughs> i like that they committed to it though and, and that they halfway through the book well yeah that for me it's when the genie shows up is when i it started piquing my interest i'm like oh okay I, I i would agree with that just because it's not the doctor running around rome trying to find Rose, and as enjoyable as the gladiator stuff was, it was kind of like, I know he's going to get it out of this. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it spent too much time not finding Rose. Yeah. Well, that was the thing is, when you get into that realm, you kind of think, okay, maybe this is the fun. And it kind of goes down that path of he's doing sort of Tenth Doctor-like things as we progress through this story. But then it's like, okay, f- just find her because I'm getting really tired of this now. It's yeah. just, you know, it, it, capture and escape, capture and escape, capture, or not even capture, nearly captured and get away. And it, was just, it was little things like that, and I kept thinking, this is just not going anywhere. It it's felt like, like a whole lot of filler. Filler, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's exactly yeah, absolutely. What it felt like. and, and they tried setting up the nuggets of things to pay off that genie, but there was so much gap between the two that you're like, where is this coming from? It's coming from left field, where their grant work was there because of Vanessa and all of that. It just, they could have done without Rose being turned to stone and taken away and the doctor going the wrong direction. Yeah, That could have cut like at least 50 pages out of the book. They spent a lot of time, too, keeping Vanessa in the dark, trying to to weave the mystery there. But unfortunately, we weren't getting enough nuggets going along to make us invest more in the character and then when you kind of dump Vanessa back into the story we get the sort of quasi info dump of why she's there and what's going on and it's like okay you kept her a mystery for this long only to just kind of dump everything on me at this point in the book this is a 60 page story yeah that got expanded out to I think 175 on the basis of adding in two or three other stories that that's really the problem with this. You've got the Rome and the the statue bit. Okay, that's one story. You've got Vanessa. That's another story. And then you've got the genie. And that to me is kind of where the book that that's that's actually what this book should have been about. Yeah, yeah that's the as silly story. as it was, and as weird and kind of goofy and outside the box. That's the part I liked the best because it wasn't boring and predictable and yeah. and 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 just oh we're running around looking for you know. Okay, it just. But then 
none of them tied together particularly well. Right. I mean, they right. they, yeah, they were brought together. The the, that's the, that's the why Vanessa I don't Vanessa like back and, the genie part because it, it was super super silly, and then they don't feel like they tied it together well enough. Yeah. And it just yeah, and I mean I can't give it the horn because it wasn't no, completely horrible. But it just, like I said, there were parts of it that I genuinely liked. I think in, in another author's hands, I think the genie could have been a really cool, cool book. Um, I think the like Stone they... Rose itself, that part could have been a cool short story. But yeah. I just, I don't think there was enough going on in either of them to warrant a whole novel. And I agree, maybe, 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 I, I you know, because I, I, we always say, know who is bad who. And I really, really try to adhere to that sometimes with, with some of the offshoot media, because you can get into some some strange areas but maybe it's the you know like you said maybe they were in that transition point and they didn't have a good read on who the 10th doctor is 10th doctor book okay well then that it it, it forgives at least in my mind a a little forgiving yeah and jacqueline rayner nor it's she's written a lot of good stuff before so i don't don't understand where well if 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 this was the the publisher saying we need a science fiction element to it because i would have been fine if if the 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 genie had been a separate story, and it was just this Roman story. It was, it was wouldn't be great, but it would have been. I I all have right. a feeling that she she's you can tell she likes history. You can tell she's a big fan of history. Yeah. And she's very much a fan of the Roman Colosseum because that was a part of Earthworld as well. Yeah. And I think that what she what it feels like to me, and this is just presumptive, but when she feels like she sat down and started to write a story and wasn't sure she wanted elements in it but then wasn't sure where she was going with the story so she sort of concocted a fantastical element to the story and then went back and filled in little pieces so that it at least felt like it was going together yeah and so that's what it felt like to me because i thought that the guy that was going to be the villain was going to be more the villain, but he's pretty much dispatched relatively early. Well, not earlier early in the book, it's but about she, halfway. Through. Yeah, halfway through, he's that. And that's it, done. And he and disappears gone. for a large chunk of yeah. it too. And so it was one of those things. That I thought, well, now we're we've got a situational villain. We don't necessarily have a physical adversary, and yeah. so it's almost like you say, it's like three different stories, and then it's like she had to back work herself backwards to fit the 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 chunk she finally got maybe right that could have been an interesting story she had to work in everything she'd already written so that it would lead up to where she had finally d- derived the story and i think that she probably suffered from not sitting down and making an outline from a to b she probably just sat down at a computer and started rolling out yeah. the storyline and had to backtrack and figure out how to make it work together there's, I mean, it could be that. It could be, you know, editor interference. It could be that they sat down and, and commissioned one story and she started telling it and then they said, no, 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 you've got to do it this way. And so then all of a sudden that had to be scrapped and maybe this was, maybe they had another partial story from another author that and she kind of came in to fix it and it wound up being mostly hers. So she got the credit for it. There are any number of things that could yeah. potentially explain the, the, away the book. The but, evidence that I have that she probably didn't have that much problem with a publisher is that she was an executive publisher on the eighth doctor adventures that came prior to this yeah so you would think somebody that was already a publisher of a series probably had a lot more free reign well i mean maybe free maybe maybe because she had been a a maybe because she knows her way around the typewriter they go hey we've got this story that there's a piece of it here that we like but oh, we can't, can you take it and do something with it yeah. and so they handed it over to her which they you know they frequently do on the show yes. is like yeah. fix that story and then it winds up becoming your story i don't think so much but, with new who but they did in the classic era yeah a lot. um and so may, maybe that was the too i don't know i just the the big thing if because they even reference with the genie you mean like the magic carpet and Arabian Nights well, kind of stuff. I, I, it's like, I, I, why not set the story then? Yeah, at that least that, a lot more sense. That, at least that has a through line to it. And well, I like the idea that the stories that a lot of the stories we get are these lost time tracks. Yeah, that that was, that was a really cool nugget that just didn't get delivered enough. There you go, and that's the problem. Is if they had given me more to that, then I might have been even okay with the genie concepts of it but they it's almost like we're going to drop this little hint that that's you know 
the the, the well, source he, of a lot of this, but we're not going to go there. You know, right. just, yeah, we're not going to explore. Hell, it. We're going to yeah. state it, but not do yeah. it. The, the, the not Doctor experience. and Rose showing up in the far future and running into Vanessa and her bringing them home to meet Dad because he's an inventor. And the Doctor goes, "Oh, really? That sounds cool." And they go to her house and discover this thing, and then get whisked back in time. Yeah, that would have worked without the worked. TARDIS. Yeah. Okay. Now we've got a you know, that's a, that's a story. I'd read that. That sounds cool, but. The resolution of the stone uh. rose, too, <laughs> is just kind of, oh, really? Yeah, okay, that's a quick solution. It, it's the the not as cool... So I, 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 it, it was nice to have a little bit of timey-wimey aspect where he travels two days back, and then, as, as of course, once she, he got the, fi- the, the vial of green goo, I knew that it was given to him by Rose yeah. and that it was going to be a time time thing and a bootstrap paradox of where did it come from sort mm-hmm. of thing. And I, and I was okay with that. It was predictable, boot, but I was okay with it. When you've got an omniscient computer, supercomputer though, the it, boot, it, it, the bootstrap doesn't necessarily there is a cause and effect. So it doesn't yeah, well, necessarily uh, work there. It could have potentially been a bootstrap, yeah, but fortunately yeah. you're able to wiggle your way wiggle your way out of this because you've got a being that's granting wishes. So Yeah. And, and and I was okay with all that. It just it was predict that part was very predictable. But I and I enjoyed that timey wimey aspect of it. But then to have the extra was a bit too much. It it, it felt a, a, a very much like the the end of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, where it's like okay, what do we need? A trash can, and then all of a sudden one magically appears. Now I'm fine with that. I love that. When you set me up that this is the well, kind of story that you're telling from the beginning. Especially in a Bill and Ted type story when it's it's played for jokes. Yes, I have I have zero problems with that kind of effect and then cause time travel. No problem with it at all. Just don't forget, we have to go back and set that up later. You have now fixed all of the problems that I have with this. This story felt like it pulled that kind of logic without doing the legwork on it and then hand-waving it away at the end to not even give us the, don't forget, we have to go back and fix that, just saying, we fixed it. It's, like, mm, it's not quite a... Th- with, you, what, what happened to... No. Well, but in, in, to go a step further, it was to, to hand-wave that away, but be pretty specific when he does go back, where where Rose does go give him. We were, it was, I thought it was a very well-constructed that we had seen this play out from the doctor's point of view. Now we're seeing this play out from Rose's point of view. Yeah. So we did a good job of, of, of cause and effect there. But then later to then just say, okay, well, I don't want to have to go through that again. So we'll just kind of so say, I yeah. So we... I took a class and studied, and now I can sculpt. Yeah, exactly. I just, it <laughs> and was then like. she helped me do uh, it. Uh, and it, it felt really mean what the doctor did to Mickey of him showing up, and he thinks he's going to say, he, he still thinks he can save her, and, and I understand what they were trying to do, add some heart and gravity to the situation, but the fact that he goes and sits him down and tells him oh, she's stone, she's dead, that's her, that's actually her, and the breakdown he has, and he goes, well, I'm going to go save her. What? That is not like the Doctor. Yeah. Maybe a little nine, but not ten yeah. at all. No, I would agree. Yeah. And it, it seems even harsh for nine. As much as he disliked Mickey, it was way too over out of character for him yeah i mean he wasn't necessarily doing it on purpose or maliciously but it just it it comes across mean because he he didn't think it all the way through right exactly and that's very unlike 10 yeah Uh, 10 is one of those fighters that's going to figure it out all the way to the end and he's not going to give up yeah and he almost feels like he's given up yeah and i was kind of surprised that Mickey did show back up midway through, and it, it was nice to have him show back up and add the weight to the story of if we don't save Rose, she's going to be stuck like this. But it just, they could have done it in a much better way. Yeah, I. Or start, or at least, while the doctor's figuring things out, well, I can fix this, but here's what could happen. And not have that, I've already failed speech to Mickey. And have that Mickey go through. I've got to tell Jackie. And, well, Jackie doesn't like me anyways. Yeah, but you're not going to be here to get the fallout of this. And right. It was. It was good. It was. There was interesting things to explore there. It just should have been handled differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Not not a fan of uh, of this one. Me either. Or is it me neither? <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, what do we got coming up on the schedule, Sean? Well, coming up on the schedule, I hope you, uh, I hope you've all visited our Amazon store and purchased yourselves a copy of the Aztecs Special Edition. Because we will not be watching the Aztecs Special Edition, <laughs> <laughs> but there's a bonus feature that we will be watching for Friday Night Who, uh, which is Galaxy Four, which is a special reconstruction that they did, the lost episode, which they found uh, how many years ago was that? Two, three. You're here at Galley. It was the year before I went to Galley. They found it and they debuted the episode. At, well, I don't know. If they, they didn't debut it because it was shown to. Uh, they Canada. debuted it in North North America. Well, yeah, it was the de- the North American debut was at Gallifrey, where I actually got to see it. So whatever year that was, 2012, I think maybe. All right. I think they found it the summer before that. Galaxy 4. We're watching Galaxy 4 for Friday Night Who. Um, so this is a special reconstruction that I believe is going to include the missing episode in Toto and then um, all the recon pieces of what the rest of the story is around it. Right. It's, They'll it's, do it's one, one of those con- abbreviated yeah, uh, the condensed. condensed. That's a condensed uh, uh, recon. recon. But that's what we're watching for Friday Night Who. Now, we're going to be reviewing all things galaxy four we're going to be covering the novelization we're going to be covering the the, the recon uh, that we were the condensed recon we're also going to be looking into the um uh, loose cannons. loose cannons thank you uh so um you know it's part of our uh, look back at uh things that uh, are no more i'm very sad about that <laughs> <laughs> maybe glenn won't be he's kind of expressed oh really <laughs> you gonna do that one next <laughs> <laughs> He'll just come out and say, well, it wasn't the Crusades, but... <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's that's our look uh, next week for Friday Night Who, and then um, uh, for the for the show. And then the following week is Planet Comic Con, and uh, we have two stars from one episode that are both going to be at Planet Comic Con, so we're going to watch that episode for Friday Night Who. It's Asylum of the Daleks, and both uh, Rory and uh, Clara will be there. Help me with names. Jenna Coleman and uh, Arthur Darrow. Arthur, Arthur Darrow. Thank you. So uh, we'll be watching that and then uh, bringing you all the, the, the news that's fit to be news about Planet Comic Con and our experiences and uh, fun times to be had there. And if you're local or uh, thinking about coming down for Planet Comic Con, we certainly encourage you to do that. You should get your tickets because they just keep adding guests, as mentioned, <laughs> Hallie Atwell and Stan Lee and Kevin Smith on Friday. George and Dekai's coming. George back. Dekai's coming. Uh, 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 Hulk, um, Lou Ferrigno. Ferrigno, thank you, and um, yeah, on and on well, and on with the big names. Just gobs of big there's, names this year. If there's somebody there's you like, they're probably there. yeah. If there's a or genre there's a that you like, there's probably a uh, <laughs> person there that's connected to it. Even some voice actors. Yeah. So come on down and and see us because we'll, we'll have a couple of panels there, including one with. Should we mention uh, the Who? The Who. The Who. The who? The who? The who that we're getting. Yeah, it's official, right? Yeah. It's official. It's official. Yeah, we can say it. Uh, Jeremy Bullock is going to be there. So, uh, you know, you you probably know him from Star Wars because he was Boba Fett. If you're listening to this podcast, you better know him from Doctor Who. (laughs) We've We've talked about him. We've watched and reviewed both stories that he's in now, so... But, uh, yeah, Jeremy Bullock is uh, going to be sitting down for an hour, well, uh, 40... 48 minutes. Eight minutes uh, <laughs> with us uh, to talk about uh, his experiences filming uh, Space Museum and the Time Warrior. So uh, if you're in the area and uh, thinking about it, then you, you better you better come see us because we'll be there live. You get to, Where else are you going to find this kind of witty repertoire live <laughs> with a guest? I mean, it doesn't happen every day. But it, it will happen every night on the talk shows, late night talk shows. But not to um, this level. <laughs> <laughs> not to this level. Fallon's Never got nothing on us. Whoa, he's really setting us up. All right. And uh, where where else are you going to go to hear the question? <laughs> As uh, the first question, <laughs> the one that must never be answered. <laughs> Do you like the Wizard of Oz? <laughs> Does, uh, as as, as uh, Sean mentioned, you can uh, find a uh, link to the uh, Amazon store on our website. On the uh, right-hand side of the screen, there is a button there. If you click that and uh, click through to Amazon.com, any of your purchases, Amazon.com, any of your purchases made there after you've gone through our redirect link, a uh, par- portion of that goes back into this show. Uh, there are some other sponsors on the side rail as well if you want to check those out for us. And if you want to order some merchandise from our Spreadshirt show, there's that as well. 
If you're not supporting us on Patreon, please do so. Uh, every bit of that money goes right back into the show. And if you are already a supporter through Patreon, we appreciate that. And uh, you have our undying grat- gratitude for uh, doing so. And please continue to do so. And thank you for all the support we've gotten there. Uh, it allows us to do things like go to Comic-Con and bring you this show and pay for servers and things like that. So all of the uh, fruits of your uh, uh, donations uh, are, are being used and shown here in, in this uh, respect. So we appreciate that. If there's nothing else to cover this week, um, until next week, I'm Glenn. I'm Sean. I'm Keith. Cheers. Good night, everybody. Be seeing you. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. You have been listening to Traveling the Vortex. Doctor Who and all of its associated programs are owned and trademarked by the BBC. No infringement is intended or implied.